A lot of people wonder why I'm living here. Because I could live in LA or New York and be building sculptures there, but the minute I drive up to my little ranch here, I feel like I'm onto something that's never been done before. My name is John Lopez and I'm a scrap metal sculptor. I use a scoop shovel, I use snow chains, I use wrenches, scissors, gosh, I use tractor seats. Basically anything that is mild steel. It just so happens that I live in a scrap metal paradise because every farmer and rancher in the area has a scrap metal pile of some kind. People are very generous around here to invite me over and say, you can look through our scrap pile. And so that's where I gather my materials for my sculptures. So then I bring all this found objects home that I've handpicked and I start grabbing things and fitting them up there. It's a textural experience. It's almost like a patchwork quilt, if you will. It's got a little bit of everything in it. And within all that chaos, when you step back, the animal comes to life. And scrap metal shouldn't do that. One of the most important things for me is to be connected to the land. South Dakota inspires me. I bought an empty lot on Main Street in Lemon, and right next to the park that I put it in was an old bar called the Kokomo. I cleaned the Kokomo out, renovated it, and turned it into a really nice art gallery where I can feature and show my finished sculptures. I've had people come up to me and express in emotion what it means to them, or I've had letters. I've seen a lot of scrap metal sculptures around, but I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody capture the life that my sculptures capture. And maybe it will affect some of the kids that live here in their life and send them off in a direction that it wouldn't if I wasn't living here. A lot of the work is quite repetitive. The pleats took about two months to do. Probably did those eyes 10 times. Even the texture of the skin, their graceful dancing, which I wanted to portray. That's the whole goal is to make them feel like they're gonna swim away. I'm Steven Kessler, also known as Tusk. I'm a large-scale wildlife sculptor. I found sculpture a little later in life, in my late 30s. Moving from one career to the other, especially into the art world, that's a totally scary and foolish thing to do. I don't think I had an option after I started sculpting. I think my life was going to be it no matter what I did. Sculpture as a whole has inspired me. I mean, it's a 24 hour thing for me. Sleep just gets in the way, almost. When I'm out doing day to day things, not being here, it's always running through my head. I don't know if I'd personally call myself a daydreamer, but I could probably be labeled one. There is definitely a calming with clay. I usually work 12 hours for three days straight. Being able to realize what I want in it quickly, it just seems like it works together with how I process. I've been involved with making three life-size giraffes, 40 
foot whale shark, four manta rays, and we're working on this 30 foot iguana behind me. The humpback whales took roughly nine months. The inspiration to do these pieces for the aquarium was because Utah is a landlocked state. There's a limited number of people that you see these in real life anyways. To be able to be in the same room, feel the size of it, hopefully there's an energy to it and hopefully inspire conservation acts because of it. If someone says, oh, I can't sculpt this, it'd be tried, buy it. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. Open the box of clay, see what's in it. You know, there might be a humpback whale in the future.